Why did the CGIF see the need to add a focus on natural resources in the 1980s? CGI was very successful since its establishment uh, in 1971 following a Bellagio meeting around the need to boost the world's food production. And we saw through that green revolution a lot of emphasis on improved varieties and improved cropping systems, but that was not the whole solution. And there was a lot of drawdown on natural capital in looking at that. So we, we recorded the revenue from increased cereal production, but not the negative cost to the environment. And that is why it was very important to bring in that environmental dimension, that ecosystem services. And probably the biggest win for the world was, was the creation of C4 in 1993 to help strengthen that within the CGR. We, we live um, in a transition of times. In the 1970s, food production was the main um, agenda item for the CDIR. Since then, we've seen development of the, of the uh, political arena, development of the objectives on all levels, and we see a lot more of the social and environmental aspects coming in, just as it does with sustainable development. So both your centres have played key roles in the programme on forestries and agroforestry. You've just finished your first phase. How did that go? Can you tell us about the key challenges and the main achievements? But this year is the final year of the first phase, so we haven't quite finished it yet. But uh, C4 and ECRAF are the largest contributors to the program of forestries and agroforestry. We're now moving into a second phase. We are currently working on the planning of that, and it will, the new phase of the forestries and agroforestry program will start in 2017. We will add new partners. We will develop our, our work, our agenda, our objectives further we will streamline and, and focus on our theory of change to make a difference along the lines that we've discussed here today and uh, it's really about the partnership um, it's really about the interest of stakeholders around the world to invest in this program i mean it's a fascinatingly exciting program because it's been operational for six years and we've achieved more as as two centers working together than we have probably in the previous decade and that was brought excitement to the scientists, it brought operational realities on the ground. It was about co-location, co-design, co-investment, and, and co-attribution and recognition of the outputs of that. To do what? To accelerate impact in those environments in which we work. As I see it, and as I know we share this view, research, capacity development and engagement is integrated in, in development and in our efforts. C4 envisions a more equitable world where forests and trees contribute to the livelihoods, to the well-being and to the, a sustainable environment for all. A great focus in the second round is going to be capitalising on the gains we've made under gender. The Forest Trees and Agroforestry programme had the, one of the most progressive, not only gender strategies, but gender action plans. And it was very rewarding also to see the high level of attribution of budget towards increasing the role of gender in our programmes. When you ask the question, are we optimistic? I think Peter and I share a lot of um, hope and uh, joy and opportunity around raising the profile of forests and trees in the framework of the Sustainable Development Goals, in the framework of the Paris Climate Agreement, and also in the new CGR Forest Trees and Agroforestry Program. Because if these two premier research and development organizations on forestry trees, if we can't do it, no one else is going to be able to.